Hello and welcome to my channel and today I'd like to show you how to make this gorgeous witch's hat in Blender. So start with the default cube and delete it and then add a new mesh which will be a cylinder. Make sure you have 22 vertices and the end caps have nothing in them so the fill type is nothing. And now we're going to scale the cylinder down so it's around the size a bit smaller than one of the highlighted grid scares, squares in the background and now I'm going to select the top vertices with x-ray mode on so you select the front and the back vertices I'm scaling them inwards and dragging them down in the z direction to form this sort of a shape I'm adding an edge loop in the middle and then I'm dragging that down a bit as well and so now I'll select the rim and then I'm going to drag that up a bit in the Z direction to create this sort of, this kind of shape for the rim. Now selecting the top vertices, I can scale those to the size I want the this head to be, or the head will be. So if it's a large head, it needs to be quite large. And now I'm forming the peak by extruding, snapping the, the extrusion extruded vertices back and scaling them in a bit and then extruding again in the Z direction scaling in and now I'm going to rotate those in the Y axis and drag it down a little. The hat will be slightly crooked and that's why I'm rotating it. So once again extruding, snapping the vertices back then scaling them in again then extruding upwards in the, in the Z direction scaling those in and then rotating them in the Y and then I'm just dragging them to across in the X direction to make it look a little bit more crooked. Yours doesn't have to be crooked, it can be straight. So once again the same process, extrude, snap back, scale in, extrude upwards. I'm just repeating that here so once again I'll be scaling that inwards slightly and then Extruding, letting it snap back, and then scaling those new vertices inwards, and then extruding them upwards in the Z direction. It doesn't have to be the Z direction, it could be any direction you like, and then scaling those inwards. And now rotating, so it's a little bit, it's a bit crooked towards the other side now. It adds a, quite a nice little distinct witch's hat look when it's a bit crooked. So once again, the same process, which I'm sure you all know off by heart now. Extrude, snap back, scale, extrude again, and then scale, and then rotate, and then repeat. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. So I'm just adding some temporary colour to the hat, making it black. We will be texture painting, so this is only a temporary colour. And now I'm just doing some general shaping and adding a bit more of a tip to the end so that it flops over a bit as you can see on my model so there you have it just rotating so that it adds more volume and now I'm adding loop cuts to the center of the geometry between the edge loops sorry the extruded edges and scaling those outwards a bit so it forms a bit more of a volume, a bit more of a rounded shape with volume rather than a diagonal line upwards. And now I'm going to be shaping the rim of the hat. So I'm hiding the vertices in the peak so I don't I don't move them using the proportional editing tool, which, which is what I'm using now, proportional editing tool to shape the rim so it's slightly wavy, it goes up at one side and down at the other and that makes a really nice floppy hat look which I really like. So just making that look smooth. We will be using a subdivision modifier which will smooth out even more but it's best to sort of make it the geometry nice and tidy at this stage as well. So it looks asymmetrical. That's the look we're going for, asymmetry. So 
just shaping it a bit more. I'm adding my subdivision modifier now, which smooths everything out. So we need to add holding loops to the edges because when you add a subdivision modifier, it's all the edges get, get smoothed out. So always use holding loops. <laughs> just evening out the geometry a bit here. And now I'm forming the band. So I'm just duplicating all the vertices in it from the band on the hat itself, duplicating it, making it a separate object and, and scaling it so that it sits on the outside of the hat. And now I'm giving it a different color and making it orange so I can see it. <laughs> and dragging it down, the top vertices down a bit so that it's a bit thinner. And now I'm going to form the buckle by taking the two face front forward faces that go straight down the middle, either side of the center line. I'm just duplicating those with Shift D and now making them a separate object by pressing P and separate by selection. And now I'm just using inset press by pressing I and forming the edges of the buckle using inset. And now in the center, I'm using the bevel tool, which is control B. And that makes a nice, some nice edges directly in the center. I'm going to curve out the edges around the side by selecting these diagonal edges and then using the bevel tool again, control B, and then using the scroll wheel that gives you the amount of geometry inside the bevel so it determines how smooth the curve is and deleting those faces in the middle so it's cut out. So now we have our buckle. I added a solidify modifier at the end, it's not shown in this um, tutorial but the solidify modifier made everything look a bit more chunky <laughs> and, and not just one layer thick <laughs> and you, sometimes you do need that for your VTubing software. And it just looks better in general. And I added it after I texture painted it and it was fine. I think the only problems you could have is that the edges, you won't be able to paint the edges using the solidify modifier because it adds, it adds extra geometry at the edges. So if you've already painted everything, then you won't be able to repaint it, if you see what I mean. Now I'm adding my seams, as you see there. And now I'm going to unwrap it so I create my UV map. And Blender Guru on YouTube has a wonderful tutorial which goes through all of this. Texture painting, UV, creating the UV maps, and it's his Make a Donut tutorial. It's, it's quite long, but it's very thorough. If you go through that tutorial, He'll be able to tell you everything and I will hopefully be making a texture painting tutorial at some stage because I love texture painting in Blender. It takes a while to get used to. It really does. <laughs> it's very different, but once you get used to it, it's surprisingly powerful and smooth. <laughs> So now I'm just adding, I'm just, I'm just fiddling. This isn't actually part of the tutorial. I'm just creating, I'm just setting up Blender so that everything looks nice for the later stages. This is a denoising. This is in the compositor and I'm adding a denoiser uh, node so that when I take a picture of the hat right at the end, it isn't, it doesn't have speckles using cycles. The cycles render renderer will add noise, which you get rid of by doing this. So I'm just setting things up for later. So you don't need to worry about that unless you really want to. <laughs> and that's good. <laughs> so now I'm trying, I think I'm trying to find my model. It kind of disappeared because I was using, I was on the wrong thing. So now I'm going to start painting the hat. So I'm going to use a very dark blue and then I'm going to use a darker blue for the edges and for the ridges. So it looks as if they go in and out. They do go in and out, but it's just to emphasize it in the texture painting. So with texture painting, we sort of make the geometry stand out even more. So I'm just doing that now using the paintbrush 
and I'll be using the smooth tool and the smear tool which blends everything together so it looks and it's a nice gradient although this I wanted this to be not partic not so smooth so it looks a bit grungy like an old witch's hat should be <laughs> so once again I'm just going up the the peak adding the shading that grungy shading and doing the same for the band so I'm just adding a darker orange around the edges and smoothing that out slightly so it blends in so Blender has a soften tool and the smear tool and I, I use both of them to integrate the colour and blend the colour So now I'm going to paint, oh, just in the buckle now, <laughs> and I'm adding a highlight around the front facing edges to give more of a rounded shape. So when you give the highlights, it suggests that those bits are coming forward. And I'm blending everything out. Adding a bit more of a darker shade around the outside. And then it should give a, an illusion of, of of form, of volume, which is what we want. Now I'm adding the front highlight to look as if there's light shining just on the front. Just doing that with a, a lighter shade of blue and blending that out. And I'm painting directly on the model in this case, which is something you can do too. And adding the same highlight to the, the band. And we're nearly there. <laughs> And it's finished. And there's your witch's hat. Isn't it gorgeous?